Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I just wanted to remind you all before we get started, if you can please mute, mute your microphones or your phone uh, if you haven't done so already. And um, yeah, welcome everyone to Las Fotos Projects, uh, a decade in the making celebration of Las Fotos Project and uh, especially our founder, Eric Ibarra. Uh, my name is Lucia Torres. I am the current associate director of Las Fotos Project and future executive director. Uh, very honored and excited to be able to say that as well. Um, I, it gives me really great pleasure to be able to introduce this night to you all and to uh, talk a little bit about the organization and yeah introduce Eric um, you know Eric has been a, a very great friend to me and a mentor as well since 2014 when I first joined the organization and it has truly been an honor to be able to see the organization grow from a small back room at Girls Today Women Tomorrow to you know, this wonderful studio and exhibition space, from seeing girls use point and shoot cameras to now doing studio photography for big name brands, um, from hanging up artwork, I remember, in reclaimed alleyways to, you know, now we have shown at, you know, uh, Museum of Latin American Art. And so that growth has been tremendous and amazing. And I've been so honored to be a part of it and so honored to have worked with Eric uh and and watch him do all this work but i'm not going to talk too much more about that because that's the reason you all are here uh is to have eric share exactly how all that came to be um but before that uh, i'm sure that those of you who are here already know you know who we are las fotos project uh but in case you're not too certain i just wanted to share a little bit more uh las fotos project mission is to elevate voices of teenage girls from communities of color through photography and mentorship and we empower young women to uh, use their creativity for the benefit of themselves, their career, and uh, the community. And so we have three core programs as part of Las Fotos Project. Our first core program, which is actually the foundation that Eric built the organization on, is Esta Soy Yo. It's a self-exploration through photography program where young women are able to find their voice through photography and experimentation and creativity. Uh, the second program that we have, which is the second program that Eric founded, was Digital Promotoras uh, or Digital Advocates. And it, with this program, young women use photography as a way to advocate for their community and tell the stories of their community and make sure that it's uh, our community stories that are being highlighted by young women who are part of the community. And the third program, which uh, Eric is now, you know, launching us into, uh, this this great future of ours is CEO Creative Entrepreneurship Opportunities, and this program provides teen girls with opportunities to grow their professional careers as hired photographers, doing event photography, product photography, headshots, um, and we have some amazing things planned for that as well that you will hear about in, in a little bit. Um, and so with that, I wanted to uh, move on to the presentation, but actually before I, I present our next speaker, I wanted to present a very special guest, uh, Kimberly Ortega, the district director for Supervisor Hilda Solis's office. And Kimberly is gonna share a few words. Sure, let me get my laptop going, sorry. Uh, hi all, um, on behalf of Los Angeles County Supervisor Hilda Solis, thank you for inviting me to participate in today's festivities. Uh, my name is Kimberly Ortega and I am Supervisor Solis's District Director for the Southeast Los Angeles region and her Arts and Culture Deputy. My work as Supervisor Solis's Arts and Culture Deputy is geared towards uplifting the work that Las Fotos Project is doing in and for our communities. As you know, the arts and culture sector generate a staggering one out of every five jobs in the county. Artists were among the first to be laid off, furloughed, or have their contracts canceled when the closures began. Artists in communities hardest hit by the pandemic may have been earning as little as 400 per month before the closures. Already, 29% of our arts nonprofits have laid off or furloughed staff. More than a third have tapped into their financial reserves. 45% of them are not confident their organization will survive. We also know that many organizations in the arts and culture sector, especially those in the performing arts, will be among the last to come back to full operations. 
Uh, furthermore, data show that youth between the ages of 16 and 24 and those identifying as Black and Latinx are particularly struggling with COVID-19 related unemployment. Um, you know, by getting artists and arts organizations back to work, we can continue to support the cultural lives and community resilience of our county and help our residents thrive. We know that efforts to strengthen the safety net in LA County must be systematic for all workers, including arts and culture workers. Assisting organizations like Las Fotos Project in this moment in, in, this moment in time will help recognize the disproportionate impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in our county that has magnified underlying structural and systemic inequalities, address and dismantle historical inequalities in services, investments, and opportunities, and ensure that arts and culture are at the table in the county's plans related to resilience and recovery. And I say that because Las Fotos project is very dear to Supervisor Solis. Um, and, you know, she's had the opportunity to work with Eric for as long as she's been in office in our county representing the first district. And I remember, you know, sitting down with Eric talking about what we can bring right to the organization, how we can move the needle in our Department of Arts and Culture to continue to support, you know, organizations that are so beautiful like this one that are empowering our youth that are that are you know not only uplifting our ESAP communities because we know that a lot of these youth are coming from around the county and so with that you know Supervisor Solis and I are you know very sad that you're going to be leaving us uh, but nonetheless want to continue working with you um, to help us move the needle so that we can have a more inclusive LA County as it relates to arts and culture. And so with that, I'd like to present you, Eric, with a beautiful scroll here. <laughs> and I'll read it. It says, um, in recognition of dedicated service to the affairs of the community and for the civic pride demonstrated by numerous contributions for the benefit of all the residents of Los Angeles County. Signed, Supervisor Hilda Solis. And this is for you, Eric. I'll make sure to mail this off to you. Um, I wish you had it in your arms because it's so gorgeous and it has the logo. Um, but you know, we're, we're very sad that you're leaving us, but nonetheless, I know you're gonna be a continued partner to ensure that we maximize all of our assets and, and continue to push the boundaries on on everything related to arts and culture so that our dollars go into communities like the east side like our southeast la region like the san gabriel valley because those are communities that have been neglected that don't have a formal arts and culture infrastructure so um you know it's partners like you that will move us in that direction cool thank you very much this is a pleasant surprise um i will virtually accept <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to come and, and share, um, and Lucia and Jess for the surprise. Thank you. Awesome. Of course. <laughs> yes, that that was a that was a surprise. Uh, we worked really hard to keep that a secret from Eric. Um, so yeah, thank you, Kimberly, for joining us, and thank you for presenting that. And so with that, um, you know, a presentation of the beautiful scroll. I want to present another beautiful person. <laughs> They're amazing uh, alumni for Las Fotos Project, Metsi Garcia. Hi everyone, my name is Metsi Garcia. I'm from East LA and I'm an incoming third year at UCLA this um, year. And I've been a part of Las Fotos Project since 2015. Um, I first became interested in photography my freshman year of high school. Um, only using my phone and it wasn't until my sophomore year of high school did my English teacher Emily Grijalva actually introduced me to Las Fotos project and so I became curious and I took the chance and so I went to go check out what this program had to offer me and so here's an example of one of the first photos I took while in the program um, and before I knew it I literally was taking my camera everywhere with me and eventually as I continued on in the program I was able to showcase my art at cool art spaces like MOLA the Museum of Latin American Art where I created this self-portrait, um, which is on the next slide. Um, after really experimenting with photography, and actually in this photo, I used an orange as a tripod um, and picked a flower from my garden to make this image. And so 
I think this image is super important to me because um, it was really at a time where I was exploring my identity and how I perceived myself and I was able to share that with the world at this museum and it was an honor to you know have that opportunity but it wasn't just about the fact that you know the 16 year old girl from East LA had the opportunity to share her art at these spaces but it was also about who I was becoming because of this program. Um, photography really became my art form um, and form of expression and it really influenced my daily life. Uh, I was becoming socially aware of issues which in the next slide are some examples of some photos that are taken at protests that Las Fotos Project actually took me to and um, and, and that's what I loved about Las Fotos Project. It was very intentional about the work that we did and what we photographed. And I, because of this program, I was aware of what was going on in the world and in our communities and things that needed to be, you know, fixed and changed. And um, ever since then, you know, I've been much more social justice and community um, oriented. And so, um, yeah. And so the next slide, um, friends and family eventually knew my love for photography. You know, everyone started to know that like, that was my thing. And uh, people started asking me like, how much do you charge? Or can you, you know, shoot my, shoot my quinceanera or something like that. And I had no idea what to do in this scenario. And so I actually went to Eric to ask him for advice and he ended up creating an entire program out of it, the CEO program. And so um, he created this in order to help me and other girls uh, really take the next steps into creating photography as a business for ourselves. And so I was able to be a part of that founding class. And here are some examples of some of the photos that I, have taken as part of the, the program where I got paid. And here's a community uh, photo booth. And then the other one is a Mother's Day shoot. Um, and in this program, we were also able to create um, business cards for myself that I still use up to this day. I think they made me over a thousand of them. So I have plenty. And um, I also had the opportunity to learn how to market myself and how to price things and how to talk to clients. And I'm much more confident than I was then. And because of this program, I suddenly started to feel and value myself much more than I ever had and so I'm you know forever grateful for that and as my last year of uh, Las Fotos project I had an, another amazing opportunity to have my own solo exhibition which I named Thank You Islos as a tribute to the community before going off to college and this really gave me the chance to be a part of the entire photography process from editing to um, shooting to selecting um, subjects to printing all kinds of things and at this point, photography really was part of my identity. It was definitely something that everyone knew and I knew, and it wasn't just about the business aspect, but it was that I truly enjoyed the process of it. And um, I was really able to express who I was and share my story. And at my show, uh, this photo specifically is my favorite photo from my show, which um, is of two danzantes. And I did Danza Azteca when I was really young and my mom you know, had also done it when she was young. And so I was able to share that with the world. And once again, I'm so fortunate to be able to have this opportunity and be able to share that with, you know, the community. And so um, in my first year of college, I confidently applied to the Daily Bruin, which is uh, the largest newspaper at UCLA. And so I got the position and I became the only Latina um, photographer employed in that space. And although it was a challenge, uh, I knew what I was there for. I was able to remind myself, you know, daily who I was representing and how I wanted to impact this newspaper, right? And so this is all because I knew my value coming from Las Fotos Project. And so, yeah, these are some examples of photos that I took while um, in, the, in the, a part of the newspaper. But then um, part of my freshman year and my second year at UCLA, I decided to really take off with my own photography business and um, shoot students of color on campus. And so I did a lot of first generation graduation shoots. Uh, I did a lot of cultural organization headshots for their LinkedIn profiles and things like that. And so um, just a few weeks ago, actually, I was hired by a program who has all former foster youth and I was able to um, shoot all their individual graduation shoots. And this is something very personal to me as I am you know, former foster youth. And so I, this is, this is a reminder and the reason I continue to do photography, you know, to document our communities, to document um, our successes and our struggles. And so being a part of this program has really just influenced my life in general and um, shaped many of the experience I've had up to now. And like I've said, I've attended many protests, um, not only being able to advocate for the issues on my community, but also documenting these times in history um, and pushing me to continue to be involved in the community and network with leaders. You know, I've had an opportunity to take pictures of Eric Garcetti and these are people who like, you know, are making decisions in our community. And I was able to see that, you know, firsthand. 
And because of Las Fotos Project, uh, I got to share with the world, you know, the beauty of our communities and shift the narrative of who we were, right? Not just these like pictures of just one narrative of us, but show who we are. And um, I was really grateful for that. And so my hope now is to eventually become a mentor for the program and, you know, be able to uh, mentor younger girls who are going to have hopefully similar experiences as I did um, and show them that they have this powerful tool, you know, in the palm of their hands. And with that, I could not have done any of this without my personal friend and mentor, Eric Ibarra. He's one of the few people in my life who have continuously supported me through everything personally and professionally. He offers great advice. He loves to tell some jokes, um, never fails to challenge me, and he always, always believes in me. And honestly, this journey could not have been done without his dedication, his care, his hard work. And so without further ado, um, I'm honored to introduce Eric Ibarra. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Metzli. Uh, thanks, Kimberly. Thanks, Lucia. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes? Thumbs up? Yeah? Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out today virtually uh, to hear me talk about this organization and this really special project that um, has not only impacted my life, but I think the lives of a lot of people. Uh, and I want to be able to share some, uh, some photographs and just some personal stories of the project's growth over the past 10 years. Um, so bear with me while I set this up. Uh, for those of you that don't know, though, um, I, uh, I was born in, in Long Beach and I was raised in Torrance. Uh, I'm first generation American. My, my dad's from Mexico. My mom's from Colombia. Um, and I grew up in Torrance, went to school at Cal State Fullerton and studied sociology. Um, and then shortly after, I ended up moving to downtown L.A. Uh, in around 2008 for, uh, for a job. Um, and it's there when I started thinking about Los Focos Project. But uh, prior to that, I think inspiration came to me in a different way. Um, so I want to share my screen to share some photos with y'all. Cool. Can you guys see that? Nice white screen. Uh, yeah, so I want to start off by sharing um, a picture of my mom. Uh, this is my mom. Her name's Sophia. Uh, she uh, was the first person to introduce me to photography when I was in high school. Uh, she had been taking photos my entire life, uh, documenting our family's history and creating photo albums and really archiving all of our family celebrations. Um, and when I was around 15, she bought me my first camera. I was a sophomore in high school, and that was my first experience of uh, being able to take photos and um, focus on the things that I thought were important to me. Um, this is a picture of my mom when she was 18. Uh, she's a senior in high school. Uh, right around the time that she got her own camera, she shared with me that she purchased herself a camera from like a local uh, CVS type of store. And when she had the funds, she would buy film and process it. And I think photography always played an important role in her life as well. So just want to share the framework for the beginning of this inspiration. Um, and for inspiration for the project, uh, looking back through emails and doing research for this presentation, um, I can trace it all back to around 2009. Um, in 2009, I saw this documentary called Born Into Brothels. Uh, it's a film about this woman who had been documenting uh, workers from the red light district in India for a few years. Um, she goes one summer and takes some cameras and meets the kids that live in the area uh, and teaching them how to use the cameras and explore the city. They eventually realize uh, the potential that comes with photography. They're able to sell some of their work, uh, eventually start some college funds. Uh, semi-problematic scheme uh, overall the concept of the film but in theory uh, it was really powerful to see the potential of what working with young people in photography could lead to uh, so this is definitely a big inspiration early on um, another thing that inspired me during this time period in 2009 is uh, I learned about phototherapy and therapeutic photography uh, which is basically the act of utilizing photos for therapeutic and therapy sessions um, and uh, there's a woman named Judy Weiser who started doing phototherapy back in the early 70s and just learning about that really spoke to me um, combining sociology psychology and photography in many ways and then randomly my friend Dalen had this friend named Christian who's a DJ who went by Las Flores project uh, and during this time I heard that name and I thought of uh, the phrase Las Fotos project uh, and something about it to me sounded really uh, feminine, like a group of girls that were into photography and maybe it could be like a photo class at a local high school. Um, so uh, yeah, the, that's kind of a merge of when all the ideas started to come about. Um, I got really intrigued by the opportunity of creating a youth photo program. So I started researching existing organizations. Um, these are just a handful of some of the groups that really inspired me early on. 
Um, Critical Exposure uh, Photography Org up in DC, First Exposures up in San Francisco, the Echo Park Film Center, NYC Salt, Venice Arts, A26LA, and the Muskoka Foundation. These were all groups that already had an existing framework for how they work with young people, either through writing, through film, through photo. Um, and so I wanted to acknowledge these groups as well as, uh, as being inspiration for the work that we do. Um, eventually, I just started emailing people and asking people like, hey, this is the idea that I have. What are your thoughts? Uh, I did that for a few months and kind of learned a little bit more about the potential of this work. Um, in early 2010, I ended up reaching out to uh, Para Los Niños, a local opera school club in downtown LA, and a group called the Muskoka Foundation uh, to see if we could host some sort of photo camp. So nothing to do but to actually do the project. I decided just to get into it. So in 2010, uh, I did my first Las Fotos project workshop. Um, I had reached out to Palos Niños and asked if I could work with a group of girls. And unfortunately, the way that their programming was structured, uh, it had to be co-ed. So nine students signed up. It was eight girls and one boy. And on the first day of class, the boy didn't show up. So I ended up with a group of 18 teenage girls. So I ended up working out uh, quite nicely. Uh, these girls, some of them knew each other, most of them didn't. So over the course of the project, they got a chance to explore using cameras. We would go out to downtown LA in different areas and just kind of take photos. They would share their work with each other, write about it. And here we are in the computer lab, um, reviewing the work. Um, so yeah, it was just a really fun experience. I got a chance to kind of understand the process a little bit more. Um, and eventually we exhibited our work at the downtown LA Art Walk. Um, so, uh, the girls got a chance to showcase some of their photos and speak to people about their project. Uh, and I think this is when I got the first experience of what it was like to have a full, you know, from teaching students to displaying their work. Um, yeah, it was just a really, a really uh, fun time. Um, I got the idea to then try and do an international version. So I started looking up partners in different parts of Mexico and eventually came across this place called Buen Pastor in Guanajuato. Um, it was a, and still is, uh, it's an all girls um, like youth shelter. Uh, so um, I reached out to them, said, hey, I have some cameras. Is it cool if I come and teach photo classes for a couple of weeks? Uh, the, the space is run by like seven elderly nuns. So it was a really interesting experience to be able to live there and, and just kind of be in the day to day of, of how everything ran. Uh, same thing, we would go out into the city and take photos um, and uh, review our images together and write about them. Um, here's some of the work that they created during that project. Um, and I'll show them here as well. And if you want to follow along the chat feature, you could share which photo you like the most. Um, let's see. This is image number one. Image number two. This is uh, Guanajuato. Uh, if you look all the way up here at the top, you can see this is where Buen Pastor is. It's this little church over here, up this hill. And this is like the main university. There's another cool photo that I really liked. Uh, yeah, and same thing, ended up exhibiting their work at the, uh, the church. Uh, the girls got a chance to share their work with other girls at the shelter and also too, the nuns came and uh, they got a chance to just kind of talk, which was a really beautiful experience. Um, I decided to bring the work back to LA and exhibit it again at the downtown LA Art Walk at the Los Angeles Theater Center once again, since I already had the contact. And it was really fun. Tons of people came and saw the work, um, but it felt different because the girls couldn't come. They were in Mexico. And uh, that was during a time period when I realized the importance of exhibiting the work. The students needed to be present to also share about the work themselves. It wasn't the same when I was telling people about a photo. It was more powerful when the student was there or the photographer to share about their work. So it was during this time period where I decided, okay, moving forward, all exhibitions should be an opportunity for the students to be present to share their work with people. So that's how that came about. Uh, special story, uh, this is my sister and my niece, Sophie. Uh, my niece is like four here. And uh, when I started Las Fotos Project, I had left my consulting job. And so I was technically unemployed. Uh, and I asked my sister if I could stay with her for it was supposed to be six months, uh, turned into two years, but she graciously let me stay in one of her guest bedrooms. And Sophie became my housemate. Uh, so I spent a lot of time with her when she was around four years old. We would go out and take pictures and yeah, just kind of hang. Um, and it's a special photo because if you fast forward nine years, uh, Sophie ends up actually joining Las Fotos Project as a student. So here she is uh, nine years later. Last year, she took one of our um, SSOYO classes. So just want to throw that in there as like a cool moment. 
So fast forward to 2011, uh, I came back from Mexico and I was like, you know, I really want to figure out how to do this um, long term. I want to make this something that I'm focusing all of my time on and I want to know how I can create some sort of nonprofit entity out of this. And someone introduced me to fiscal sponsorship, which is basically like when you go and fall under the umbrella of a 501c3. I didn't want to start a nonprofit at the time, but I wanted to be able to fundraise and buy new cameras and do more programs. So I applied for fiscal sponsorship from community partners. So this is young me, uh, I think like 25 here. Uh, and uh, I filled out an application, drove it over to community partners. And in March, 2011, we became fiscally sponsored. That was a huge step for the org because it allowed us to, allowed me to uh, fundraise and to start actually uh, purchasing new equipment and doing what I need to do to actually build out the structure of the organization. During this time as well, when I was like, all right, I really want to figure this out. Uh, my partner and best friend, super talented illustrator, graphic designer, Ty, uh, created this adorable logo uh, for us. Um, Las Fotos project uh, became like official. We now had a tax ID status that I could utilize to fundraise. We had a brand that I could use to also help promote the mission of the organization. And so I spent the rest of 2011 and early 2012 just like going hard with workshops. Um, I reached out to a lot of organizations, Girls Incorporated, the Girl Scouts, Boys and Girls Clubs, all over. I was doing projects in Santa Ana and Long Beach and Pomona, um, really just trying to get a little bit more familiar with the work and kind of understand how the program could evolve. Um, one of the challenges with this time period was, though, that I would only be there for like a weekend or a week. And I noticed that the girls that I was working with were eager to get involved in another project, but it wasn't necessarily structured that way. Um, so it was more of like an introduction to photo and then that was basically it. Uh, the girls also weren't able to take their cameras home because I was using the same cameras for different projects. So though I learned a lot during this process, the most important thing I think was the importance of consistency and continuity and allowing the students to continue uh, learning through that process. So uh, in 2012, I reached out to a group called Girls Today, Women Tomorrow. They're based in Boyle Heights. Um, they're an all girls after school club that was doing really great work. Um, and I worked with them to create this really beautiful double exposure book called Nature Double Exposed. So we used film cameras. The girls went up to the San Gabriel Mountains and photographed nature. And then we put the same roll of film back in the camera uh, and they went home and photographed their community of Boyle Heights. Ended up with some really beautiful photos and is during this time here that I started doing a lot more handwriting poetry with the students. So these are some examples of some of the images that were created. Uh, the girls would choose their favorite photo, they would write about it. Um, and then I ended up scanning this and putting it into a book. So uh, doing publications of the work early on was fun as well. This is one of my favorite photos. It's the one that I use for the flyer. This is also another really great photo by Anna Cortez. She's probably like in her mid twenties now. Uh, another fun project in 2012, I worked with a photographer named Noe Montes. Um, he came and brought his like legit camera uh, equipment, lights, uh, everything, uh, to Barrio Action in El Cerino uh, and taught the girls how to photograph each other. Uh, ultimately, they created portraits of one another. I went and printed them and we did this really cool um, public art installation. It was inspired by the Inside Out Project. For those of you that are not familiar, uh, you can look it up. Uh, it's basically wheat pasting photos of the community in the community. Um, and, uh, oh, I think someone's unmuted. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, one of our first public art installations. And this theme and concept for public art ends up happening a number of times throughout the years. I think now we've done about seven public art murals similar to this one. So I wanted to kind of share that cool example. Also in 2012, and with Girls Today, Women Tomorrow, uh, we launched the first Virgen de Guadalupe project exhibition. Um, so the Virgen de Guadalupe plays a really important role in Latino culture, and it was an opportunity for us to explore a little bit more about her significance, um, what she means to different uh, people. And these are some of the photos that were created during that project. These are just a few of my personal faves. Also too, when putting this presentation together, I realized like, this mural might not even look that way anymore. So when you think about Las Fotos Project, it's not just about creating photos, it's also about archiving the history of the communities where we work um, and where the girls live. Uh, and so you could go back 10 years, seven years, and look up different neighborhoods, and there's students that live in those areas that created photos of their surrounding community, which is really cool. So it's a really beautiful 10-year archive of LA. Another one of my favorite photos, I think most Latin American households have this style of print. Um, 
And then this photo, which is also one of my favorites uh, of this ice cream truck um, that used to drive around Bull Heights with a big bead can painted on the side. So fast forward to 2013. Uh, 2013, uh, we had spent so much time at Girls Day Women's Tomorrow that we ended up moving in. Uh, they had a small office space in the back where they allowed us to, um, how, oops, I got ahead of myself, where they allowed us to, to move in and have our first home. Um, with that, we also presented our first formal exhibition uh, at an actual gallery space. So I found this art gallery in downtown LA that allowed us to display uh, some of the students' work. So it was the first time we did a culminating show with multiple projects. Um, the girls actually got a chance to frame their work. I showed them how to install their work. Um, and so that became an important piece of the work that we're doing as well. So not only working with the girls to make the image and select them, but how could you work with them to actually design their own shows um, and really frame the work and learn how to install it themselves. So really skill building as time went on. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share this as an example. Um, this is also one of my favorite projects. Uh, it was a project by a student named Emma who documented people's hands in MacArthur Park. Um, and here you can see people just participating like the interactive elements of, of the gallery. Uh, in 2013, we also did this really cool garden map. Uh, I learned about fallen fruit, which is like where you document the public fruit trees that exist. And so I worked with a group of students to segment Boyle Heights into different areas. Um, and uh, every week they would meet up with their mentors and kind of walk the streets and ask neighbors if they had any private gardens or uh, fruit trees that they'd be willing to put on a map so that their neighbors could learn more about um, the different fruit and veggies that were accessible to them in their own neighborhood. Uh, they took photographs and eventually we created this really cool Google map. Uh, so you can actually go to our website and check it out. It still exists. It's very outdated. It's from 2013. But uh, the idea is that you could find your neighborhood and zoom in and actually see, oh, cool, at 517 uh, St. Louis Street, there's a public peach tree. Um, and the Google map also had accompanying photos so people could actually see where they were. Um, and yeah, it was just a really, uh, it was really a cool way to integrate photo into like GIS mapping and doing some other kind of like online uh, project that we'd never done before. This is the group of girls that worked on that project. Um, and uh, you can also see here Diana Martinez, who I had met the year prior at, at a project in uh, East LA Women's Center. Um, and then a very special volunteer named Laura Gonzalez, who actually ends up becoming our first uh, project coordinator and then our founding program manager as well. Um, so yeah, these are some of the students that were involved in that particular project. And this is the house that we moved into. Uh, Girls Today, Women Tomorrow became our first headquarters in 2013. It became a space where we could offer um, more consistent programming to the girls in the Bowl Heights and East LA community. And also too, for our mentors to come together and participate in trainings, orientations. Uh, 2013 is when our mentorship model really flourished and it became a staple in all of our programming. So from this year moving forward, all of our projects have a mentorship component. Uh, where for every three students, there's at least one adult mentor who's working with the girls directly. There's my mom, my sister, and my nieces making another cameo. Uh, in 2014, uh, I have uh, the first wave of what I call my uh, LFP OGs. Uh, these are girls that uh, committed to the organization in a unique way. They, they really found a passion for photography, and they started in 2014, and they stuck around for many, many years. Uh, Tashley, Maya, Anissa, Natalie, Natalia, Regina. This is the first wave. Uh, all of these girls are like in seventh, eighth grade in these photos. And they all stuck around for four, five, six years. Um, they posted their own solo shows. A couple of them have become teaching artist assistants for some of the classes. Um, and they're all either starting college this fall or in their freshman or sophomore year of college. Uh, there's some other OGs that started in 2015. Um, uh, but I just wanted to spotlight these because I thought it was really special. Going through my photos to find images for this presentation was a really fun, a really fun experience. Um, 2014, uh, we also launched our first executive advisory board. Um, so in 2014, it was an opportunity to create a more formal structure for the organization. Uh, this group of people was really helping with uh, strategic planning and financial oversight. Um, and ensuring that I was implementing the program plans as we had hoped. 
Um, a familiar face here that you might see, uh, Eric Hubbard joined, was a board member for a very long time. Linda Vasquez as well is still a board member. Diana was a student who then joined the board, which I thought was also really special. And then if you peek right here, you see Lucia's face. Uh, Lucia was a board member in 2014. She ends up becoming our board chair uh, in 2015. Uh, and then she gets hired as our development manager in 2018, our associate director, and she will be the next executive director, as she mentioned earlier. Uh, 2014 was also the time when we started doing a lot more community engagement programming. So realizing that not every girl could sign up for a mentorship program, uh, was not able to commit to the weekly structure, uh, we started doing one-off workshops. We would host movie nights, um, we would, uh, we would um, uh, host like art-based, photo-based art workshops, um, and uh, yeah, we still do this to this date. So it's an opportunity for the girls to come with their parents, uh, and, uh, and other community members to get involved with the work that we're doing. 2015, I'm halfway there. Uh, hopefully I'm doing okay on time and you guys are still around. Uh, in 2015, uh, after Laura had joined, her and I joined forces and decided we were just gonna go ham with expanding the organization. Uh, prior to this, uh, in 2014, we had been working uh, with 124 girls through 12 projects. In 2015, we doubled our impact. So we hosted 24 different projects throughout the year of 2015 with 214 girls and strategically created these geographic regions where we would offer programming. They're like South, Southeast LA, uh, East Los Angeles, and then Central Los Angeles. So you can see it expanded pretty quickly, uh, which lots of lessons learned from that as well around sustainability, but it was an exciting time. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that as like a really cool feature. And, this is why so many folks, I think, from LA ended up learning about the organization because we we're in so many different communities during this time. We also had expanded into Tijuana. Uh, so Rebecca here was a mentor with us. She ended up moving to TJ and she took some cameras with her and started the first international uh, ongoing project. Uh, and uh, she was there for a couple of years. And this is a really cool opportunity to see how Las Fotos project could scale and kind of replicate itself in a completely different community, which was sort of one of my goals and dreams to see lots of Las Focos project chapters uh, all over the place. Uh, so this is cool to kind of see how that potentially could work out. Um, yeah, so that was fun. And 2015 is also the year of like our most iconic self-portraits. Uh, Self-portraiture became a really important staple in our curriculum. Having the girls not only be comfortable with photographing important people in their lives, but also turning the camera on themselves um, and creating really artistic portraits um, that, um, yeah, that, that represented who they were, environmental portraits. These are some of my personal favorites. Uh, this particular photo has been posted in the Los Angeles Times. It's been in the New York Times. Um, it's a very iconic photo by Celeste, who was 11 years old when she created this image, just to give you some insight into the creativity of these young people. Another really beautiful portrait by Jesse. Odalis created this one, Andrea Flores, and a student from Tijuana. Also uh, integrating the work with LA, the Tijuana project was an exchange program where girls from LA and Tijuana would showcase their photos and trade photos with each other through this online platform. So it's a cool opportunity for us to do some international sharing of images. Those girls end up showcasing their work um, at uh, Self Help Graphics uh, at our first uh, Self Portraits exhibition. Uh, and like Metzli shared, uh, here's Jackie Rosa, Celeste, Andrea. Uh, as as um, Metzli shared, the work ends up being picked up by the Museum of Latin American Art. And we have our first exhibition at like a formal museum, which uh, felt really special uh, to have the girls' work displayed with some historic photos uh, in a very formal institutionalized museum setting. Uh, it felt really legit, so I wanted to kind of highlight that as well. Let's see, moving on to 2016. Uh, in 2016, uh, we uh, kind of outgrew the house that we were at in Boyle Heights. Um, our programming had really expanded and one of the challenges that I faced was displaying the students' work. Um, we were not always able to have exhibitions. Sometimes we had to do them just one weekend and then we had to take all the artwork down. So one of the things that I wanted to do was have a space where we could have year-round shows. So this space, ends up becoming our home. Uh, I invited some of the girls to come and share more about what they wanted to see here, some of the activities they wanted to experience. Um, they got a chance to see the, the blueprints and kind of share feedback. 
Um, and so we turn this space, which looks a little raggedy, uh, into this. Cool. So this becomes our first formal exhibition space uh, that we open up in the spring of 2017. Um, we host over 15 different exhibitions and shows in this location. Um, and this is what it looks like when we have exhibition openings. But during the day, it's a really creative space for the girls. Um, we have tables set up where we teach classes. So every day after school, uh, girls are coming to the space to learn more about photography. They're meeting once a week for 12 weeks. Um, and uh, they're also able to meet with their mentors off, like when programming is not happening, they can just come grab a laptop, grab some cameras. Here you have Alyssa with her mentee, Julie. Alyssa ends up, uh, she's a mentor in this picture. She ends up becoming a teaching artist and then our program manager. And last month she was promoted to director of education and programs, which is super exciting. Um, we're also able to then get into a lot more production, photo production, since we have the space uh, we're able to show girls how to set up photo shoots, uh, which is cool. And we get into a lot more photo curation and critique as well. So this is what's going on in this photo. 2017, I got three years to go. Uh, we open up our darkroom programming. Uh, so the space that we moved into had a small darkroom. Uh, so here you have those same few of the girls from the OG pictures that I showed you, Maya, uh, Natalie and Natalia and Andrea as well who joined in 2015 become the first cohort of our darkroom class which was led by a photographer named Amina Cruz um, and these are some of the girls works that were created during that that class uh, one of my favorite exhibitions in 2017 was called City Rising uh, it was a documentation of uh, gentrification and its negative impacts in Bowl Heights in South LA it was in partnership with KCT, um, and what the girls would do is they'd go out and photograph stories of people who lived in these neighborhoods, and um, just to remind people of, you know, the reason why these neighborhoods are so special is because of the people that live there, the community that's been built, and gentrification has really negative impacts because folks uh, oftentimes are pushed out, and it changes the whole fabric of the neighborhoods. Um, so one of the interactive activities that we had here was a, a couple of moving boxes uh, with a notice that said 60 day notice to vacate. Um, and it, it asked folks to submit responses to how they would feel if they were pushed out of their apartments and their communities because of gentrification. Um, and it really gave people insight into the harmful impact of uh, this social issue. So uh, doing a lot more advocacy work uh, is, is what this kind of represented. And from this project came some of my favorite street photography photos. Um, this is a super special photo, which I absolutely love, created by Desiree. It's another really beautiful mural that some of y'all might recognize in Bull Heights, South LA, street vendor in South LA, and a little kid dancing. Great, I'm in 2018. Uh, okay, so 2018, um, we host this really cool project called My Women in LA. Um, this group of girls here, uh, some of them are mentors, some of them are students. They're all Guatemalan identified students from the LA area. Um, I was approached by uh, Dr. Flori Boj Lopez uh, here in early 2018. Um, and uh, she had shared this uh, concept for a project idea that she wanted to, to launch. Um, and it was rooted around uh, this particular image, uh, which is a cover of a magazine, this fashion designer named Francesca, um, basically uh, utilizing indigenous Maya women as props for the background of her photo shoots. Um, and Floody shared with me that this is a very common thing. You oftentimes see uh, uh, indigenous women used as like the background of the photo when in reality that is the spotlight. Uh, this particular designer utilized a lot of the traditional garments in her fashion and it was just super problematic. Uh, so Floody shared that she wanted to work with a group of Guatemalan girls to uh, reconnect them with their history um, and um, their roots uh, by photographing indigenous Maya women who lived in Los Angeles, uh, dressed in their traditional clothing. Um, so we ended up creating, uh, the girls created these really beautiful portraits of families. Um, this is a mother-daughter duo in South Los Angeles. Um, this is a really beautiful portrait of a young woman holding the hands of her great-grandmother. Um, and this is actually that same family. So uh, the hands you saw belong to her and her great-grandmother. And this is their family portrait also shot in South Los Angeles. 
Um, the girl shot over 4,000 photos, which is really common each semester. Uh, students average around 300 to 700 photos per semester. And one of the important pieces of Las Fotos project is to work with students to curate their own exhibitions. And so we print up the photos, we have the girls go through and select their favorite works. They get a chance to see each other's projects as well and, and decide what photos look best together as a group, because ultimately they're presenting a group photo exhibition. Uh, so that's what's happening here. This is part of all of our projects as well. Students are able to curate their own shows, which is super important. And ultimately, they create one of our most successful exhibitions called My Women in LA. The opening reception for this show had almost 400 people show up, super eager to see the work of the students. Um, this group of girls actually ends up going to Guatemala the following year as a trip for the summer. Um, so it's a really beautiful experience for them to just come full circle, not only learn about the history, but actually go and um, experience the country, some of them for the first time. So uh, one of my favorite projects. Another cool project in 2018, uh, the Migrant Mamas Mural. Uh, we worked with a photographer named Arlene Mejorado, who photographed, uh, worked with the girls to photograph immigrant women uh, in their lives. So their neighbors, their moms, grandparents. Um, and uh, these are some of the portraits that were made. And we ended up working with self-help graphics artists uh, to create this really beautiful public photo mural that you see here. So public art becomes a really important part of this organization as well. Um, for people to be able to experience the stories of the girls that they're creating. Um, so you have this lovely mural here. And it's on First Street by Purgatory Pizza in Boyle Heights, in case anybody wants to go check it out. Okay, 2019, I'm almost there, guys. 2019, uh, we have Photoville. So Photoville is like the biggest photo festival uh, that happens. Um, and it had been taking place in New York for a number of years. We had participated in 2018 with the Lower East Side Girls Club and a couple other partners. In 2019, we're invited to have our own container. It's a bunch of shipping containers that are turned into photo exhibitions. And here you see a lot of those like iconic self-portraits that were created during that 2015 semester and some others that we had just over the years. Uh, it was an opportunity for a lot of people to see the work. We had over 30,000 people from that event come out and see the students' images. Um, and another important piece of Las Fotos project is to create a platform for the girls to share about their work. So they do this at the photo exhibitions, obviously, they get a chance to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. But here you have a, an example of what it looks like to host girls at a actual panel discussion. So this is for their education day. There's about 100 young people in the audience um, and these four students got a chance to share more about their creative process, um, a little bit more insight into their work. So ultimately, Las Focus Park is really about creating a platform for young women to have their voices heard and have their images seen. Uh, so I feel like this really represents that in a very beautiful way. And then wrapping up soon, uh, CEO Pitch Fest is an event that we launched in 2019. The CEO program is a social enterprise program uh, that teaches young women how to become professional photographers. So they learn all the professional technical skills needed to either start their own photo business or join the creative world. Um, and here you have a group of students uh, that were pitching their services. So they're actually showcasing some of their best work to an audience. In the program, like Metsy was sharing, they create uh, websites as well. So uh, portfolios that they can share and actually use to start to get business. So we have Mia Bella showcasing some of her work to some folks that came out. And we have the biggest uh, graduating class of the CEO program this semester as well. So I'm proud to share this photo. Uh, there's about 24 girls that graduated from the CEO program this semester. 24 young women that then enter the world with experience uh, as professional photographers. They get hired for events, for photo booths, headshots, they earn money, they build their portfolios. And this is just a really proud moment, I think, when I reflect back on this time, um, very special image. And then this is a special photo too. All of these guys are special photos. Uh, this photo is um, the five women that I've been working with for the past couple of years. Um, uh, Alana is our community engagement coordinator. Um, Alyssa, like I shared, is our director of education and programs. Uh, Jess is our project manager. Uh, Lucia is our current associate director for the next five days. And then on August 1st, she'll be our executive director. Uh, and Lucia is our social enterprise manager uh, who joined as a grants, uh, volunteer grant writer a couple of years ago. Um, I wanted everyone to just kind of uh, take a moment to just kind of see the faces of who's gonna be leading the work into the future. Uh, these women have been doing an amazing job over the past couple of years. Um, I, uh, they've become my work family. and I just really value them. 
um, not only as uh, coworkers, but also as friends. Uh, they're really special people. And yeah, I'm just excited to, um, to celebrate them as well during this little presentation. Um, and now here we are 2020. Uh, hopefully I still have time, uh, but 2020 hasn't been that exciting to be honest with you. All I could pull was photos of us on Zoom calls. Uh, we had to take all of our programming uh, virtual. Uh, so, and as well as all of our work virtual, our students have created some really cool photos. You can check them out on our website. If you look up our exhibition called uh, image2020.jpg. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is us just hanging out on Zoom uh, like we do most days. Um, one of the things I think I wanted to kind of highlight that I'm excited about into the future is our new space that some of you have been hearing about since last year. Uh, so we got this space in 2019. Uh, we raised some money thanks to a lot of our supporters, some of you here on this call. Um, and this location is actually going to turn into our, hopefully our, our permanent home for the organization. Um, this is what the space looks like prior to construction. It's currently in construction now, hoping to open soon. Um, and the space that I showed you the first time is only this big. So it's only the size of this section. So just to give you some insight, now we have this entire section here. We have this massive 1200 square foot gallery. We have a private office space with storage, a kitchen, uh, a dark room that's twice the size of our current dark room. We have two restrooms and this really beautiful photo production studio that's gonna be a storefront to Cesar Chavez. So people can actually walk in and get family portraits made. Um, it'll be a studio run by uh, some of the girls. Um, and there's also this massive yard. So pre-COVID, we had some plans of opening up this summer and actually my farewell function was supposed to be there. It's just your ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm not sad about it or anything, as you can tell, but uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, a bummer, but I'm really excited uh, in 2021, hopefully when all this stuff, if it ever calms down, uh, we can all go and experience the space and, and uh, really see um, some work displayed in the gallery and yeah, that's my, that's my goal for the future. Um, and then that's it. Uh, I wanted to take this moment to um, thank everybody uh, for all their support over the past 10 years, especially the students. I've got a chance to meet some really creative and brilliant uh, young people who have helped me understand more about who I am as a photographer um, and as a director of this project. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet some really amazing mentors as well, people who volunteer their time to commit themselves to the mission of this organization. Um, lots of supporters and donors, people who have backed this project uh, with financial resources or connections to their network. So I wanted to thank you all as well. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, back to Lucia for some Q&A. Yeah, thank Great. you so much. Yeah, thank you for, for that wonderful time travel back 10 years. How do you feel? <laughs> you feeling good? Feeling really energized? Good. Yeah, a little energized and also um, very self-reflective. That was a really cool experience just to put all those photos together just to see that history. Um, and I'm sad, but I'm also happy. So mixed bag of emotions, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and so I want to thank everyone for, for joining us. What we wanted to do now, actually, because I, I know we're like bumping up onto the, the eight o'clock hour, which we said we were going to end. Um, so if you have to jump off, we understand. But what we wanted to do first is if we can take a quick group photo uh, so that Eric can take it with him as well for everyone who joined his presentation. And Jess, who is uh, doing our background, you know, stuff, will be doing a screenshot. So. Um, Let's see, Jess, will you let us know when it's when you're ready and set to go? And what we're gonna do is, and this is gonna be a little weird, you're also just hang with us. Well, you're just gonna pose for a few seconds <laughs> while Jess takes a screenshot photo. Uh, and we're gonna have to hold that pose for a few seconds because there's a couple of pages uh, of folks on here. So she'll go, you know, one and then do another one. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and do that. Get okay, your Jess, angles in. Um, I will count us down. Everyone's on different pages, so just try and hold it for a minute. <laughs> um, so I'll start with the first page and one, two, smile. Okay, hold because some of you are not on this first page. One, two, and smile. Amazing. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Jess. And we will send out that uh, to all of you as well. We're going to send out a, a recap. Somebody asked for the um, Spotify playlist. So we'll send that over as well, uh, along with his group photos. Um, so yeah, we understand that if you have to go, but if you want to stick around, uh, we're going to take some Q&A or some questions and have Eric answer your questions. And you can either um, you know, ask your question yourself out loud, or if you want to pop it into the chat, we'll go ahead and read that out too. Um, and if you need to, to hop off, we understand. But yeah, feel free to stick around. We're going to take a few questions for Eric or Metzli, if you have questions for Metzli as well. Actually, a quick question. Uh, Metsy, uh, Metz had a drop off, so she's not here at the moment. Oh, okay. So just questions for her. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Or, or comments if you would like to share a comment as well. Or none is cool too. <laughs> I'll, I'll start <laughs> off uh, just to make it a little less awkward. <laughs> um, Eric, I first wanna say uh, thank you for providing the space. Um, I was a mentor, I don't know, for like a year and a half. I don't know, uh, a few semesters, but um, through Las Fotos, I've met some wonderful girls, some who I still talk to daily. Shout out to Rocio, who is on here. And I think I saw Ruth. Yes. Um, so thank you. I, yeah, I'm, I'm just very thankful for it. And the question for you is, um, do you have any personal uh, photo projects planned? I know you're going to Mexico, or are you taking a pause on the photography? Yeah. Um... Yeah, thanks. And you said you've been an awesome mentor. We miss you. We hope you come back soon. I know we're neighbors now. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for asking. Um, my plans uh, are to go to Mexico to take a short sabbatical, uh, depending on how this COVID thing works out. Uh, it might not happen, but that's the plan. And um, this town in Mexico, Burundi, was really the only place I've been photographing uh, for the past like six years. So I uh, am looking forward to being able to um, create some of my own photo projects, uh, focus on that particular area and yeah, just having some time to explore my own photographic creativity, which, you know, working full time, uh, some of you all know is a little bit of a challenge when you want to do some artistic expression. So yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully in a year, I'll be able to send you a link to my own personal, my own personal work as well. For now, you can follow me on Instagram to see pictures of, of Mexico, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have a, a question? Like I said, you can ask it out loud or if you want to, you know, pop it into the chat, you can do that as well. And we'll, we'll ask it ourselves out loud. Eric loves answering questions. <laughs> Somebody asked, where's Elmer? Where is Elmer? Yeah, no. Is, is I, Elmer going to miss us? <laughs> yeah, I left Elmer at Ty's house. I just imagine me trying to present and Elmer flipping out on something and barking. So uh, he's at uh, other daddy daycare for the moment. Uh, so I could have a peaceful presentation. And for those, those of you who don't know, Elmer is our uh, seventh <laughs> staff member in <laughs> security. He's our security dog and security system and bodyguard. <laughs> And also Eric's uh, Eric's companion, furry companion. Uh, there's another question, Eric. What would you say you've learned or gained from this past decade of working with young people uh, in LFB? Um, I've learned a lot. I think specifically working with young people. I think um, ooh, that's a good question. I feel like Miss America contest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think working with young people has been a cool experience for me to uh, remind myself that this is all just like a learning experience. The young people that I've worked with have been really eager to learn more about photography, about their communities, and that's really helped me um, want to do the same. Um, I've met some students who have been down to explore different themes, different projects with no hesitation. Um, and even if it's something that made them uncomfortable in regards to like getting outside of their comfort zone and going up to people and asking them questions, uh, they're very fearless in that sense. Um, and so that's definitely inspired me through this process. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just being around so many creative young minds has helped me also continue to stay creative and young now, just creative. Um, but yeah, I think that answered the question. Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Rocio, you have a question? I have a question. Hi, I'm Diana. Um, well, first I want to say I've known Eric since probably around 2005 or so. Um, I knew him prior to this whole thing and I feel like he has come such a long way. I'm so proud of you, like beyond proud of you. My question is, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to start their own nonprofit? Cool, great question. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I would uh, suggest people do is get involved with an organization that is doing something similar to the type of nonprofit that you want to start. Uh, one of the things that helped me early on was volunteering at Venice Arts. They were very gracious to open their doors to allow me to come in and mentor. And through that process, I was able to learn more about the programming and kind of around what I wanted to do. But uh, it was kind of like some insight into the do's and don'ts and how to structure your project. So I would definitely suggest exploring any existing projects that already have that type of theme or goal. Um, and then really just surrounding yourself with people that are also passionate about that uh, particular mission. Um, look into fiscal sponsorship. If starting your own 501c3 is not something you feel like you're able to do, there's definitely a lot of fiscal sponsors out there that can support you on the back end of creating a nonprofit. Um, but I think the idea is like, um, no idea is, is so rare and unique that it doesn't already exist. So just do some research to see what exists out there and learn from people that are already doing it. Um, yeah, and I'm always available for questions. If anyone has questions around the process, feel free to email me. Thank you, Diana. I met Diana when I went to Cal State Fullerton. Uh, so she's known me for a long time. She knew me, <laughs> yes, a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, Thank we you. have... We have a, a couple of questions for you in the chat, Eric. First one, black and white or color? Ooh, I like color. I think black and white is nice as well. It allows you to just like focus on the content of the image. Um, but I like color photos as well. I like both. I'll say color. You can, you can only choose one. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> uh, color. Okay. All right, yeah, and next question uh, first is, uh, Amara says, congrats on such an amazing journey. I was wondering why you chose to start an org for girls specifically. Yeah, uh, to be quite honest, it was just the idea of the name, Las Focos Project. It sounded like an all girls photo club. Uh, and back then I don't think I was as socially aware or conscious of the potential impact of what starting an all girls photo club could do, to be quite honest. Um, and as time went on, after doing a couple of projects is when I realized uh, the importance of creating this type of space. And that's when I decided Julie really just to focus on, on this population and this demographic. Um, I get asked that a lot and I realize it's uh, because I'm a guy. Um, but I also think it's a good opportunity for people to realize that you don't have to focus on just something that represents you. I'm also a photographer. I'm also a first generation. A lot of the young people that we work with we share a lot of the similarities in that sense as well. So a gender isn't necessarily the only thing um, that would make me have similarities with the students that I work with. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like a, a random idea that turned into to what it is now. So I, I wish I had a better response for that, but that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a, another question in the chat. This is Vivian and Escalante with Boyle Heights Community Partners, born and raised in Boyle Heights. And we are heavily involved with historic preservation and cultural arts heritage slash heritage in our community and would love to have Las Fotos project in capturing the historic place. How can we work together in having you join our program or a joint program? Is, is that a question for me now, Eric? <laughs> yeah, I don't work anymore starting in a couple of days. So you can email uh, Lucia at lasfotosproject.org uh, and she can get back to you with ways of collaborating. Um, yeah, let's see. What else? Oh, I see. Let's see. Oh, cool. I can see everyone's questions here. I saw Rocio had a question. Rocio Hernandez. No? She's shaking her head now. No, it's because my Wi-Fi and then I'm going to cut off and you guys are recording. <laughs> well, we can hear you now and you're already talking, so just ask me. Well, I just want to say thank you. I didn't want to speak because I was going to start crying, but I want to say thank you because I've met like the most amazing people 
here like you you guys are so cool and nice and you're always willing to give advice and go out of your way and that's really nice and um i made really good friends here and thank you for that and thank you for being brave and taking the chance on your idea it's really inspirational right now because i'm scared of college and everything but um I think you guys are have been helping me a lot, so thank you. Rocio is also one of my favorite students. Uh, uh, I have a lot of favorite students, but uh, she's actually joined the organization not that long ago, a couple of years ago, and quickly stepped up to take on different leadership roles. Um, we actually are part of a, a little documentary together created by Bese, uh, so she was my, my co-star in that. Uh, and uh, last semester, she actually was a teaching artist assistant for one of the classes as well. Um, so, very special human being as well. Uh, thank you, Rocio. Who else is on here? I have a question. Hey, Emily. <laughs> um, so, I'm Emily. I'm the board chair of Las Fotos Project. And, um, you know, it's been amazing to be part of the board and just support this amazing organization. And I've told you before, Eric, I know that you mentor a lot of young women, but you also mentor us. <laughs> and I feel that when I first started kind of lurking around as just volunteering, uh, you really pushed me to consider even joining a board. I had no idea what that was. And then you've also helped me professionally and a lot of the decisions I've made. And, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about my worth and what I should, how I don't charge and do a lot of free labor. So I appreciate all those conversations and I'm definitely gonna miss you a lot. Um, I think one of the, you know, during our board meetings, we've talked a lot about the mental health aspect, right? Impact that this organization has and how that was maybe not something that you realized was gonna happen. But could you maybe talk about that, about how like, Yes, there is the photograph and like the actual curriculum, but like kind of what are like some of the important impact that the girls have had be through this program, especially in regards to mental health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this goes back to, to like the therapeutic uh, photo activities that take place. Um, I think anytime you create an environment where somebody feels comfortable sharing more about themselves and they don't feel judged and they don't feel like they're gonna be criticized in a negative way, it's nothing but a positive experience for that person. Um, and sharing photographs that you've taken of yourself or of your family is a really personal thing. So anytime that a person gets that opportunity to connect with someone else through their images, I think is naturally a very bonding process. Um, so for me, I think ensuring that we created an environment where everybody there felt comfortable with each other, where mentors felt comfortable with the students, um, that's first and foremost like the foundation of creating that type of space. Um, but ultimately, I think it's the confidence piece that really is what makes Las Fotos Project special in regards to mental health. Um, to be, for anybody, to go to a place week after week and someone be there to support you and uplift you and help you learn and, and celebrate your uniqueness and your specialness. And um, that's a really uplifting experience to go through week after week and semester after semester. And so really at its core, I think uh, Las Fotos Project is a space where students and mentors are able to build confidence in who they are um, and taking risks like Rocio was saying you know like maybe not thinking you're able to do something but then you do it and you realize that you're capable of doing that and it's just this constant process of like learning and learning more about yourself um, also Emily's been an awesome board member uh, she attended that first exhibit in 2013 um, and started uh, following the organization uh, joined as a board member shortly after um, and is also a very special person. She's our board chair. Uh, so thank you, Emily. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have uh, time for a couple more questions. We have one in the chat, so I'll read this one from David, and then if uh, someone else wants to ask uh, another question after this. Uh, so David says, building an organization from scratch takes a lot of energy and certainly some failures along the way. Is there a decision from the past decade you wish you could change? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think he already knows the answer to that. Uh, yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, starting a nonprofit organization, one of the biggest challenges is always funding. I mean, realistically, you need money in order to pay people, to buy equipment, to pay for rent. Um, and I think one of the decisions I made early on, which I would probably have done different, is um, I think this idea of like, uh, 
mission drift, which is basically when you start doing projects that maybe don't totally align with your mission. Uh, and so early on, I think in the spirit of trying to raise money, we started doing projects in, in, in different spaces that maybe didn't relate to our program or didn't put our students voice at the center of the work. Um, uh, and uh, earlier on in like the early 2013s, 2014s, um, I think uh, trying to get funding so that we could do more work is when we kind of uh, grew at a rate that was not sustainable. Um, and so I literally had to like, not literally, but hit the brakes at around 2016, 2017, and just kind of slow our programming back down to a rate that felt sustainable uh, and, uh, and a place where we could still continue to do good programming with our students and not over exhaust ourselves or burn out. And so I'll definitely say, um, you know, setting up a, a realistic uh, uh, growth pattern for yourself as an organization leader uh, so that way you don't burn out and feel like you're not doing enough, uh, which is a common thing that happens. I think you just feel like you're not doing enough and you need to do more and you need to do more. And uh, making an impact in one person's life is is really a, a big uh, feat in itself. So, so yeah, that's probably, that's my response for that one. This is hard. Whose idea was it to do Q and A's? <laughs> Usually we have like a week to respond to these. <laughs> that's the question. Yeah. I'll get back to you on Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have another question in the chat, and then I don't know if anybody else has one more question, but I, I, I know the answer to this one too. Landscape or portrait? Yeah, y'all know I don't have <laughs> portrait orientation photos. Uh, it's like an inside joke at, at the space. Uh, landscape photos are, are my, my thing. Uh, every now and then there's a portrait orientation image. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, yeah, I think that's so random for people to hear. We're going to skip on to the next question, but definitely landscape. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. And Vivian, you, yes, if you have a, a question or a comment, you said you can go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to say uh, what you've actually created, especially for the young uh, ladies of today and also the young women of the future. Um, I just want to say kudos to you because it is very difficult um, for women to actually get really a heads up in an industry such as uh, photography that is still uh, very male dominant um, and also giving opportunities to women in our community of Boyle Heights um, as I've been born and raised in Boyle Heights and have a long history here um, and I just really really want to say congratulations and yes the startup for a nonprofit organization is extremely exhausting as the president and founder of Boyle Heights Community Partners. We are a startup and we um, are working diligently uh, with our community. And we are really happy that you've actually created this program and that we look forward to also um, working together on joint efforts because with a lot of the history, storytelling, historic preservation, um, education, which is what we are pretty much founded on, um, we could collaborate well here and congratulations in, on your future endeavors. And to all of the fabulous uh, women here, uh, congratulations. And if you feel you don't have enough confidence, well, look in the mirror because you actually do. And thank you for your confidence and stepping up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And that is actually a, a very uh, great comment for us to end with. Um, and so actually, if you all can unmute yourself, I want to try this. Can, I want to see if we can give Eric a round of applause and we can hear it on the recording. So let's see, I see you all unmuting. So I'll do it on the count of three because it's like applause on Zoom thing. I know it's really weird. So one, two, three. And again, thank you all very much for joining us tonight and for taking this look back with us with Eric and celebrating Eric and all the incredible things that he's done um, to set the foundation of this incredible organization that uh, really has touched a lot of people, uh, you know, in different ways and inspired a lot of people in different ways. And yeah, if you want to continue getting involved with us, um, please connect with us at our website and and social media handles and everything is up on there. 
y'all follow us on Instagram because that's where we're active. And once the new space is ready, we'll we'll have you all come in and, and we'll party uh, however distant that we need to party <laughs> when it's ready, very safely. But yes, thank you all so much. Uh, Eric, I don't know if you have any last comments or you wanna, you wanna thank us out, good night. Yeah, thank you all, good night. Uh, also very excited for Lucia. Uh, Lucia is gonna do an amazing job in the years to come. Uh, so would love for you all to uh, donate, support, mentor, and ensure that the mission of this organization continues for decades to come after this because it is extremely important that this work continues. So 